tonight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning L.I. News Team. Good evening, I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. A Long Island driver has been arrested on a DWI charge after police say he struck and killed a pedestrian. It happened last night around 8.30 along Sunrise Highway near County Line Road in Amityville. Suffolk County police say 46-year-old Kenneth Serwin of Lindenhurst was driving east when he hit a female in the roadway. Police have charged him with driving while intoxicated but did not release his blood alcohol level. The victim has been identified as 18-year-old Tanyelle Silvera of Amityville. Authorities say she was pronounced dead at the scene. Authorities say a 28-year-old Central New York man has been accused of fatally shooting his father, a retired Long Island police officer. Police in Trumansburg say Matthew Toronto shot 58-year-old Sal Toronto several times in the chest late uh, Tuesday night in the home that he shared with his parents in the Finger Lakes Village. Authorities say the shooting happened during a domestic dispute. The victim, Sal Toronto, was reportedly a retired Nassau County police officer. The son, Matthew Toronto, pleaded not guilty to a second-degree murder charge and is being held without bail. His lawyer says he acted in self-defense after his father threatened him with a gun. A 21-year-old Suffolk County man out on probation for a rape conviction is now facing new rape charges. Suffolk County police say 21-year-old George Rodriguez of Central Islip was found to have inappropriate photographs and videos on his cell phone. Probation officers seized the cell phone and an investigation revealed Rodriguez had allegedly been sexually abusing a 16-year-old girl, taking video and photos of various sex acts he performed with her during the past year. He was arrested on Tuesday. Rodriguez has been on probation since February for a previous rape as a registered Level 1 sex offender. Governor Patterson was on Long Island today to break ground on a solar carport project that's expected to produce energy while reducing carbon emissions. Dana Arshin has the story. Governor David Patterson and Suffolk County Executive Steve Levy joined the Long Island Power Authority and two solar companies in Brentwood to break ground on a project to turn seven Suffolk parking lots into solar power lots. It is a win, win, win. It's a win for the environment, it's a win for the county and that will receive eight to nine million dollars worth of revenue through the leases and it's a win for the private entrepreneur. In Exco, a wind and solar project developer is building carports covered by solar panels that will generate electricity. That power will be sold to LIPA for a profit and the county will receive money and rental fees for leasing the space for the carports to an Exco. According to Governor Patterson, the completion of these seven solar power lots will result in the reduction of 14,000 tons of carbon annually. And he says New York has now taken a big step forward to regenerate our economy. When uh, completed and fully utilized, this will be a 17 megawatt producing facility uh, that will uh, be able to light 1,850 homes. The lot should be completed by the end of 2011, and Levy says he's and confident his solar county people. will lead the way to a greener environment because less carbon means less pollution. I believe that this project right here in Suffolk County will serve as a model for the rest of New York State and the rest of the nation moving forward. In Brentwood, Dana Arshin, LI News Tonight. A Long Island woman has been charged with assault in connection with the stabbing of another woman last month. Police say three weeks ago, 36-year-old Shalisha Ross of Hempstead went up to a woman she knew in a car along Fulton Avenue in Hempstead. The two reportedly got into an argument, and police say Ross pulled out a knife and stabbed the victim in the neck and chest. 
The victim was hospitalized for emergency treatment. Ross was arrested last evening, charged with assault and possession of a weapon. Nassau County police are searching for a man who robbed a taxi driver in North Valley Stream. Police say the suspect got in the cab last night in Laurelton and asked to be driven to a location on North Fletcher Avenue in North Valley Stream. Well, during the ride, police say the driver became suspicious and tried to make a U-turn, but the suspect pulled out a gun and aimed it at him, stealing $470 cash, forcing him out of the taxi, then driving off in the cab. The cab driver was not injured. And two Long Island men have been arrested on drug charges after being spotted in a McDonald's parking lot with heroin and Valium. Police say the two men were arrested in the McDonald's lot on Wantaw Avenue in Wantaw Friday night. Officials say 30-year-old John Fatsis of Massapequa Park was discovered with three folds of heroin and seven Valium pills, while 29-year-old Michael Fabrizio of Belmore had seven folds of heroin. What well, was another up day on Wall Street today? The Dow finished up 106 and two-thirds points. NASDAQ was up just under 30 points and the S&P was up almost 15 and a half points. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. A knit and talk support group for women with breast cancer meets at Adelphi University School of Social Work in Garden City on the first Monday of each month from 2.30 to 4 p.m. For more information, call 516-877-4314. The American Parkinson's Disease Association has a monthly support group at New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury on the second Friday of the month at 2 p.m. For more information, call 516-626-6114. The Nassau County Museum of Art presents Family Sunday at the museum in Roslyn Harbor on on Sunday afternoons at 1 p.m. For more information, call 516-484-9337. And the North Shore LIJ Health System offers a weekly support group for stroke survivors and caregivers at Plainview Hospital on the fourth Thursday of the month from 2 till 3 p.m. For more information, call 516-719-2411. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to Tonight at nyit.edu. Press play to start your future. Learn the industry. Use the technology. Become an expert in television reporting. Journalism. Radio. Digital film. Public relations and advertising. Television production, digital graphics, a beautiful state-of-the-art campus, a road to the job you've always wanted in the media capital of the world. Communication Arts at NYIT. When can you start? Some stories around the world today. Qatar has been selected as host of the 2022 World Cup, beating out a bid by the United States to bring soccer's showcase back to America for the first time since 1994. FIFA's executive committee chose Qatar over the U.S., Australia, Japan, and South Korea in a secret vote today. Minutes earlier, Russia was announced as host of the 2018 tournament. It was chosen over England and joint bids by Spain, Portugal and the Netherlands, Belgium. Dozens of Israeli prison guards who were on their way to evacuate a prison during a massive forest fire were killed after the bus they were in burst into flames. The fire, which was still out of control mid-afternoon today, prompted authorities to clear the area of hundreds of residents and also move Palestinian inmates from a prison there. Authorities are still trying to determine the cause of the blaze. Israel experienced an especially hot summer and has had little rain this winter. 
And freezing temperatures and blinding snow are making travel difficult in much of Europe for a second day now. Authorities are airports are closed in Britain. Flights are delayed elsewhere and some rail passengers in Germany were forced to spend the night in parked trains. The cold has also claimed 10 more lives in Poland for a total of 18 deaths. Officials at Gatwick, one of Britain's busiest airports, says staff are working to resume operations, but conditions have deteriorated considerably. The airport is expected to remain closed for the rest of the day. The Fortunoff's Christmas store in Westbury was an annual destination for many Long Islanders for decades. But it disappeared a few years ago when Fortunoff shut its doors and closed its Westbury Anchor store. Well, the Fortunoff's Christmas store is now back, as Nicole Stevens reports. Fortunoff's Christmas store is back in business at its backyard stores after the company closed for a year back in May 2009. And customers here at the Westbury location say they're happy to see the Christmas store return for the season. Back. People can't believe that we're back and they're upset that last year there was like no place on Long Island to do our Christmas shopping. This store is fantastic. It has all the items you can get for to decorate your place. Love it. I used to live on Long Island. Walking through Fortunoff's at Christmas was the thing to do and still is. Everybody comes in and just says how happy they are that we're back. So it's actually good to come to work and have people like the fact that you're here. And customers say seeing the Christmas store back in business is a positive symbol of things to come. I knew the economy was in the dumper when Fortunoff's closed, so now I'm very encouraged that it looks like things are turning around and I've got hope for the future again. These times and financial uh, bad times, it's good to see somebody coming back. Helps the economy and it helps the people. According to the store manager, Fortunoff's brought back the best of the best when it comes to Christmas, with the intention to grow as the years go on. You know, as we grow each year, we want to, you know, if we do well for Christmas, which I think we will, we're going to grow bigger next year. So that's what we're trying to achieve, bringing outdoor and Christmas back to Long Island. The Fortunoff Christmas stores will be open throughout the season, but will transform back into outdoor patio showrooms after the holidays. In Westbury, Nicole Stevens, LI News Tonight. The U.S. Army plans to get new recruits into better shape with a revamped approach to health, fitness, and diet at basic training. Gone are the five-mile runs, bayonet drills, and fatty foods in the chow line. New recruits instead will now work on core strength, injury prevention, and healthy eating habits. Army leaders uh, unveiled the new approach this week at Missouri's Fort Leonard Wood. Milk and juice dispensers will replace soda fountains, and whole grains will be substituted for white bread and pasta. It's said to be the first substantial change to basic fitness training in the Army in 30 years. A Deer Park man has been arrested in connection with four commercial burglaries in Deer Park this month. Police say an officer on patrol early Sunday morning near a business on Deer Park Avenue saw a man carrying a pry bar. Police say the man ran off but was apprehended a short time later. According to detectives, 51-year-old Anthony Malatesta was charged with four counts of burglary, including break-ins at a deli, a boutique, a Chinese restaurant, and a pizza restaurant. Malatesta is also charged with possession of burglary tools, criminal trespass, and resisting arrest. Well, after all of yesterday's wind and rain, we had a beautiful day today. Lots of sunshine, high temperature in the low 40s tonight. Mostly cloudy with a low in the mid 30s. Tomorrow, partly cloudy with a high in the low 40s. Saturday should be mostly sunny, high in the low 40s. Partly cloudy on Sunday with a high around 40. And the outlook for Monday, partly cloudy with a high again around 40 degrees. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.